YouTube, I am Truman and you are watching Characters of Arkham. This series is meant to take a look at many of the characters as they are presented in the Arkham franchise. On this episode, we will be looking at the fear psychiatrist, Scarecrow. You are all experiencing fear. An emotion experienced in anticipation of some specific pain or danger. This is perfectly understandable. Dr. Jonathan Crane, better known as the Scarecrow, makes his grand debut in the critically acclaimed Batman Arkham Asylum. Bullied as a child, he vowed to overcome his fear through studying psychology and biochemistry. He succeeded. Crane went on to experiment on human subjects, which led him to be kicked out of his university. As Scarecrow, he armed himself with a synthesized fear-inducing gas, which is able to make a person's worst fear become frighteningly real. His research is the only motivating factor in his life, and as a result, takes great pleasure in seeing his victim's mind shatter from exposure to his weaponized toxin. His reign of terror makes him one of Batman's most psychologically dangerous foes. During the beginning of the game, when Joker takes control of the asylum, Scarecrow is one of the many inmates released onto Arkham. There is evidence, however, that Crane was not locked up prior to Joker's takeover, or at least had ways of leaving his cell. With a secret hideout, Scarecrow was able to do an ample amount of plotting of his own. When free to run about, Scarecrow resumed his experiments, first unleashing his toxin on doctors, but soon fixated on using it on Batman. Under Joker's employ, Scarecrow dosed Batman three times over the course of the long night. Each time, the nightmares became more real and more frightening. First Nightmare attempted to convince Batman that he was too late to save Commissioner Gordon. As he tries to call Oracle to tell her that he was too late, he finds himself unable to reach her. The hallway appears to tilt as Batman makes his way to the morgue. Here he finds three body bags, the first two containing his deceased parents, the final one containing Scarecrow, who leaps out at him. With that, we start to play a 2.5D game of cat and mouse, ending with Batman shining the bat signal on the giant Scarecrow and ending the hallucination. The second had him relive the night of his parents' death. Like the first nightmare, we witness our environment transform in an unnatural way. As Batman makes his way down the infinitely long hallway, it slowly transforms into Crime Alley, the location of his parents' murder. The voices of his parents echo through Batman's head as he relives the experience. Finally, the third nightmare presented a seemingly impossible situation, where the roles of Batman and the Joker are reversed. Now, Joker is the one who wheels Batman into the asylum. The asylum itself is under the complete control of the criminals Batman has put away. The last nightmare sequence, in most people's opinion, is probably the most thrilling, if not scary. This time, not only was Batman inhaling the toxin, but in a sense, so was the player. We see before our eyes our game glitch and what looks like a restart. The execution was brilliant, and I'm sure there were many players who thought the game broke down when they first got to this sequence. It is through these nightmares that we, as the player, learn about the fears of the Dark Knight. When reviewers mentioned how much this game made them feel like Batman, they weren't exaggerating. Besides the gadgets and the superb fighting mechanics, which were a big highlight, the game also delved into Batman's psychology. This unique experience allowed us to learn something about Batman, while also providing a break from all the fighting. It's no wonder that these nightmare sequences were the most memorable part of the game for most people. As the last nightmare comes to a close, Batman has successfully countered even the most potent of Crane's drug. But Scarecrow isn't done yet. He initiates a plan to flood the entire asylum with his toxin, trapping everyone on the island in a never-ending nightmare. Unfortunately, he meets what appears to be certain demise when he is grabbed by Killer Croc and dragged into the sewers. He is not seen for the rest of the game and is presumed dead. 
In the following game, Batman Arkham City, set one year after Arkham Asylum, Scarecrow does not make a physical appearance, but there are plenty of references to him throughout the game. I've already done a video about these references, a video that is arguably the most popular on my channel. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description. All of these references suggest that Scarecrow has been plotting revenge against Batman for what happened at the Asylum. Perhaps he will have a bigger role in an Arkham City sequel? Only time can tell. Outside of these two games, Scarecrow's most prominent appearance is perhaps in Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. Here he is the head of Arkham Asylum and is under the employ of Ra's al Ghul. His appearance in this film really fits with its theme, the theme of fear. While Batman uses fear as a motivator for others to take action, Scarecrow uses fear as a manipulator to ultimately get what he wants. He uses his fear toxin to convince the public of criminals' insanity so that he is able to move them into Arkham. His true intention, besides using them for his fear gas experiments, are to help certain criminals secure early release. Nice bit of trivia, Scarecrow is the only antagonist to appear in all three of Nolan's Batman films, making cameos in The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. Would you like to see my mask? I use it in my experiments. In Batman Begins, the Scarecrow is one of the most terrifying of villains. These crazies, I can't stand it. A sadist in the position of power. We meet the Scarecrow as a doctor at Arkham Asylum. He's used that entrusted place to experiment with chemicals and drugs. He enjoys watching people's minds completely snap as a result of the use of it. There's nothing to fear, but fear itself. Scarecrow uses fear as a tool to ultimately get what he wants, independent of what it might cost others. This is an individual generally not psychotic, but very intense, and in their need to self-aggrandize. In the game, Scarecrow's nightmare sequences are used to explore Batman's characterization. It is through these that we learn of Batman's fear of being insane. While he does not appear in Arkham City, Scarecrow is obviously hard at work with a new scheme to terrorize Gotham and tear down Batman. Given Batman's psychological condition at the end of Arkham City, spoilers, I can foresee Scarecrow taking advantage of Batman's depression over the loss of Talia and the guilt over Joker's death. It would be the best time for Scarecrow to kick Batman while he's down. What do you think? What other role could Scarecrow fulfill in a sequel? I would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching.